Hello everyone, we will continue the topic concept of TVARVC table and in the previous videos we studied the concept of TVARVC table then we can maintain data into this table using STVARV transaction code in the previous video we took a requirement based upon that requirement yes we used a parameter section. We used the parameter section to maintain this value under this particular variant. We used selection option section to maintain these multiple values under this particular variant. Now we will proceed further. Now see as of now, these entries are in, into this particular system. Suppose now, if we want to transport these entries to quality and production system, it means these entries should be in the transport request. Suppose if I will go to parameter tab, I added this particular entry. So this entry should go to quality and production system if we want these particular functionalities to work. Anyways, as of now, we have not written any logic, but these entries should go to quality and production system. Same case is with this. Whatever the entry we added, this must go to this particular quality and production system. Now, how, how we will save these entries into the transport request. Now, suppose if I will go to this particular transaction code, STVARV, I will go to change mode. Now you can maintain the data through create button or individual maintenance. Now while creating itself, while creating itself, suppose I created this particular entry, you can simply select this checkbox and go for save. So at that time system will ask you to save in that transport request. That is one way. Suppose another way. Suppose at the initial level, you have not saved in that transport request, but you can save later also whenever you want to move it to quality and production, you can simply simply go for this and it will save into that transport request. Suppose as of now in the previous video, I just showed you we have not saved in that transport request. Now, if I want to save in that transport request, I will simply select this entry. You cannot select multiple entries. At a time, you can only select one entry. This is our entry. I will simply go to change mode. It's a request to all of you. Do not forget to go into the change mode because now we want to save in the transport request. So I'll simply go to change. mode. If at the level of creation itself, you selected this particular checkbox, then there's no issue at that point of time. Now the entry is already there. Now we want to save in the transport request. So select that entry, go to the change code. Now select this particular checkbox. Now whenever you will go for save, system will prompt for the transport request. I will go for save. Now you can see system is prompting for the transport request and it is not prompting for workbench request. It is prompting for customizing request and it is fully, fully explained in the transport organizer playlist what a customizing request is. Suppose if I will click on to this create button, we will create a customizing request. I will go for this. Suppose I will give the short description. Suppose I will say entries of TVARVC table. I will go for save. System generated this request number. We'll check also. I will go for OK. So this particular entry saved into our transport request. If I will go to SC09 transaction port and check See, it's a request. Yes, whenever you will check your transport request, do not forget to select this particular checkbox. If it is selected, then it's okay. I will go for display. 
Now, this is my transport request, customizing request. If I will simply go to sub request, table contents, yes, T V A R V C table and just see what we, what the entry is. Z quantity, variant name, parameter. If I will double click, yes, you will be able to see. Suppose if I will double click, if I will simply, simply go for change mode and show you what is there into that. Now you can see this is the full entry which we maintain. Now this particular entry is into our transport request. Same way, we'll go for selection option. I will scroll down and I will save this entry also into the transport request. I will simply, simply go to change mode. Now, yes. You can go for this particular checkbox is ticked. I will go for save. Now system is asking, do you want to save into transport request? Yes, we'll save into same to same transport request. I will go for okay. Now I'll just close that because system is considering this in change mode. I'll close that transport request because I opened in change mode. That's why system is not allowing me to save. Now, if I will go for OK. Now, if I will show you transport request, I will refresh. Now we will be able to see, you can see three entries because this Z weld underscore user. Yes, we have two things. Yes, we maintained two users. If I will go for this particular sub request, if I will go for this, you are able to see three things. Two for Z weld underscore users and one for Z quantity. Because it is a parameter, we maintain single value. For this, we maintained the multiple values. Yes, from practice purpose, it is not mandatory that you have to save into the transport request. You can simply save in this particular system itself. Whenever you are working in a project and yes, you want to transport these entries to quality and production system, then you need to save into the transport request. Now, now we will go for another point, which I told you at the initial level, whatever we are maintaining into this particular table, it is in this particular client only. It is client dependent table. If I will go to SC11 transaction code, this is another client. I will go to 100 client. If I will go to SC11 transaction code and show you TVARVC table. Into this particular table, if I will go to contents, yes, whatever we maintained, whatever we maintained, it is into this particular client only. Description is itself. It is a client dependent table, client specific table. Now we will go for an example. Suppose you are working in a project and you have two clients, two development clients, 100 and 200. You have two development clients. In 100 client, there is no data. And in 200 client, there is data. It means whenever you want to test, you have to test in 200 client. You cannot go for 100 client. See, I'm not talking about quality and production system. I'm talking about multiple clients of development. You have two multi, you have two clients of development system. Yes, Toyot works on this kind of landscape also. There are multiple clients of the development system. In 100 client, there is no data. In 200 client, there is data. It means if you want to test, if you want to test in 200 client, it means whatever you maintained in 100 client, it should go to 200 client. Now, how, how these entries will go to 200 client? Firstly, I will show you in 200 client. This is our 200 client. If I will go for this, this is 200 client. If I will go for same to same table, T V A R V C. If I will go for this table, this is client specific table. 
Now, if I will go for same to same thing here, if I will go for OK, you can see in 200 client, there is no entry because whatever we maintained in 100 client, it is into that particular client only. It will not come to 200 client. Now, if you want those entries to come into 200 client, you need to do a client copy. Those who know SAP script topic, they can understand very well. Scripts are always client dependent. It means whatever the script you will create in client 100, it will not come into 200 client. You need to do a client copy. Same thing is here. Yes, if I want these entries to be in 200 client also, I need to do a client copy. And what is the transaction code for the same? SCC1. SCC1 is the transaction code. So in 200 client, I'm going for this SCC1 transaction code. For SCC1, we have a new transaction code also, SCC1N. You can use this also. Anyways, I am comfortable with SCC1, so I will use SCC1. Now, I do you want to go to new transaction? No, I will use SCC1 only. Now, it is asking, what is the source client? Yes, 100 client, because we want to copy the request of 100 client into 200 client. So what is our source client? 100. Here I will pass the number of the customizing request, transport request number. I will check in 100 client. What is the transport request number? The customizing request which we created. This is our customizing request. I will go to 200 client. This is our 200 client. I will go for this request. Include task. Yes, we want to go for task also. Firstly, you can go for test run. So that you can check is there any error or not. Go for test run. Start immediate. You can see there is no error. Program ran successfully. Now I will remove this checkbox and now I will go for start immediate. Yes, I want to copy from 100 to 200. Yes. It means whatever is in 100 client of in this particular transport request, it will come into 200 client. Now, if I will show you 200 client data, I will go to same to same table. Yes, this is 200 table. If I will go to execute, now you can see same contents came into 200 client. And yes, now you can test also. See, for this particular video, this particular video is optional. If you are doing for practice purpose, it's not mandatory that you need to save in that transport request. It might be the case you do not have multiple clients. No problem. Because anyways, this video is optional. Yes, if you have multiple clients, yes, if you want to practice, then do this particular video. Else, it will not impact whatever the implementation we will do in the future videos. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we cover two important parts. What is first important part? Whatever you maintained in TBARBC table, it should go to quality and production system in the real projects. What is one option? While creating the entries in TBARBC table through this particular transaction code, while creating itself, go for this particular checkbox. Whenever you will go for this particular checkbox, system will ask to save in the transport request. You can save into the transport request. Suppose currently you have not saved. Suppose in the previous video, I have not saved in the transport request. Now you can save later also. Select that particular entry, whatever you want to save in the transport request, go to change mode. Then after that only, you can select this checkbox Go for save. System will prompt for that transport request. You can save in that transport request. Now, after that, I showed you the same way for this. Now, we checked the transport request. We are able to see that data in that transport request. Now, the next question comes. Suppose you are working in a project and you have two development clients, 100 and 200. 
if 100 has data, but 200 does not have any data, and you are implementing this kind of requirement. Now, if the test data is in 200 client, it means you need to do the testing in 200 client. So how these entries will come into this particular client? Because this table is a client dependent table. 100 table data will not automatically come into 200 client. So you can go to SCC1 transaction port client copy transaction code, you can go for SCC1. And also that's a newer version of SCC1. You can pass the transport request, go for test run, and then you can simply transfer that data, whatever is in 100 client to 200 client. So in this particular video, we studied these two concepts, how to save in that transport request and how we can do a client copy. In the next video, we start implementing the logic part in VA01 and VA02 transaction code. So that's it in this video. Thank you.